This video will show you how to make basic changes to an inspection and create your own template. To get started, we'll open up the Pontech icon and we're going to start a new inspection and we want to select the template that we want to use as a starting point. So we'll select our house template to start a new inspection with that and then we'll click on start new. This brings up where we can give our file a name and we're just going to call this test. We'll click on save and now we're ready to go. Most inspectors like to change the templates to fit how they inspect. They like to rearrange the order of items, add new lines and sections in, take lines and sections out, and we're going to take a look at how all of this is done. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how to rearrange the order of categories. So let's say that you like to inspect the roof first as soon as you get to a property. To move the roof category up in the list, all you have to do is click on it, hold your mouse in, then drag it, and that gray line tells you where it's going to go, and you simply drop it. Roof is now second in our list right after our general information category. To rearrange the order of categories, once again, all you have to do is simply click on the category that you want to move, and then drag it and drop it where you want it to go. Another change inspectors like to make is they like to rename their categories. So let's look at the garage and carport category and say instead of having this called garage carport, let's call it just garage. To rename it, all we have to do is go up to tools, rename category. Then here we'll simply make the desired changes. So we'll take off the slash carport, we'll click on OK, and now our category's been renamed. Another change you can make is to delete categories from an inspection. So let's say you don't inspect outbuildings. And so we don't need this outbuilding category in our template. To delete it out, simply right click on it, select delete, and it asks you, are you sure you want to delete this category? We are, so we'll go ahead and click on yes, and now that category's been removed. The final change you can make with categories is you can add a brand new one in. So let's take a look at how to do this. The first step is to go up to tools, add category. Here it asks us if we want to copy an existing category and there are times when this is very helpful but in this case we're going to select no because we want to add a brand new one in. This is where we give our new category name so we'll just call it new category and then we have a box here for use line numbers and ratings in printed report. Depending on the category that you're adding in there are times when you will want this checked and there's times where you won't. A good way to look at this is if you're adding a new category that's going to have inspection items in it like we have in our other categories like lots and grounds, exterior, and roof, then you'll want to leave this checked. If you're adding in a category that is mostly just information such as an agreement, an invoice, standards of practice, or something else along those lines, then you would want to uncheck it. In this example, we'll leave it checked, so we'll simply click on OK to move on. This brings up a screen where we can choose where we want this new category to appear. Our new category will show up after whatever category is selected here in the list. So we'll say we want this category to appear right after electrical. So we'll select electrical and we'll click on OK. And when we do that, we'll see we now have our new category added into our list right after the electrical category. When we click on it, you'll notice that it's empty. And the reason it's empty is because we haven't added anything to it. From this point, you can go in and then add in new lines and components to include the exact information you want to set this category up. That's a look at how to work with categories. Now we're going to take a look at how to work with lines. So let's go to the lots and grounds category. So let's say that the first thing you inspect here are the fences. So we want the fences line to be above driveway. You can change the order of lines just like you could with categories by simply clicking on this icon to the left, holding your mouse down and then dragging it where you want it to go. And that gray line tells you exactly where it's going to go. So we'll move it above driveway and now we'll let go and fences is where we want it. You can rename a line by double clicking on the item text. And so instead of steps and stoops, let's call it just steps. So we'll double click right on here. We'll pull up the modify prompt screen and we'll make the changes we want. So we'll take off where it says stoops. We'll click on OK and now that's been renamed. If you don't inspect lawn sprinklers and you want to delete the line out, you can simply come down to whatever line you want to remove, 
click on the icon to the left or right click on the line and then select delete line. It asks you, are you sure you want to delete this line? We are, so we'll click on yes and now that line's been removed. Finally, we can add in new lines. To add in a new line, we'll go up to tools, add line. And here we have an option for type. There's quite a few line types that we can choose from. One question answer is the most commonly used line type, but in the general information category, you'll see that we also have two question answers, as well as three question answers, and some yes, no's. You can add in a standalone note, check boxes, or an option list, a text piece where you simply add in a block of text to your report, page breaks, a signature line, so if you wanted to collect an electronic signature, you would add that from here, as well as a line type that's simply a rating, a prompt, and a note. For this example, we'll select the one question answer, since that's the most common one. Here for the screen prompt, we'll just call this fountain, so we're going to add in a new line for fountain. We have the options whether or not we want a rating and a note on this line, and we do, so we'll leave both of these checked. Then over here on the right, we can choose where we want it to show up, and so we'll put the fountain right after the, we'll say right after the window wells. So we'll click that, we'll click on OK, and now we can see our new line for fountain has been added in. We've now taken a look at how to rearrange items, how to add and delete items, and how to rename them to make the template the way you want. The last change we want to take a look at is changing our components. So this allows us to customize what happens when we tap on the add another button. So let's go ahead, we're going to scroll down, we're going to go to our bedroom category to take a look at this. Here we see the standard setup for our bedroom and it starts out with one by default. If we want to add another bedroom, we can do that by clicking on add another bedroom. To customize the bedroom component, all you have to do is make the changes you want to the bedroom that's already here and then we're going to click on this icon here and we're going to tell it to save to library. So let's go ahead and make two quick changes to show how this works. First, we're going to take out the electrical line. So we'll click on our icon and we'll delete the line now. And then next, we're going to change how Windows is displayed. So we'll double click on it and we're going to modify this prompt and we're just going to put parentheses around the S and then we'll click OK. And of course you can make as many changes as you want, but we've made enough to show the difference. And now that it's set up the way we want, we'll come here to our bedroom location line. We're going to click on the icon here, and then we have the option to save to library. So we'll go ahead and click on that. This pulls up the name of the component. We want to keep it as bedroom, so we'll click on OK. And now, when I click on the add another bedroom button, we'll see that it comes in customized the way I set it up. Now that we've set this template up the way we want, the last step we need to take is we need to go up to Tools, Save as Template. So that way the next time we go to start a new inspection, all of these changes will be there. So when we do this, the first message that pops up says, your inspection contains data. Do you want to erase the data before creating a template? And what this means is that somewhere in a template, we have an answer typed in. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes, because we want to clear it out. Now, it's important to note that oftentimes, inspectors will pre-fill answers and they'll make those answers part of their standard template. If this is something you'd like to do, then when this screen pops up, you would click on no, because you want whatever answers you filled out to stay in there. We'll go ahead and click on yes. And on this next screen, this is where we give our template a name. And so we'll just call this house with changes for the file name. And we'll give this, the template name the same. So we'll say house with changes. We'll click on OK, and it says, great, the inspection's been saved as a template. Do you want to send this to your cloud drive? And I do, because I want this template to be available not only on my laptop here, but I want this to be available on whatever mobile devices I'm using. So I'll click on yes, and it goes ahead and then sends that template over. One other thing I want to mention is when you're setting up your template, if you made any changes to, say, your dropdowns, or you customize the components like we looked at, you also want to send your library over to your cloud drive. For more information on how to do that, watch the tutorial on sending your library over from the PC to the app. Now that we've created our new template, the next time we go to start a new inspection, we'll see this newly created template as an option. So to see that, we'll go ahead and close out of this. We don't need to save changes to it, so we'll click on no, and we'll close out of the program. We'll open it right back up, 
And when I go to Start New Inspection, we'll see we have a template called House with Changes. So open it up real quick. And as you can see, the changes we made are there. The roof category second. The new category we added in is there. Lots and Grounds is customized with the changes as well. This concludes the video on creating your own template.